So, uh, Chase Young, you want Brady? Well, something tells me you're going to get him. Yo, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another uh, prediction video where I talk about the um, the NFL playoffs right now. Um, today, uh, well, earlier, actually, I don't know when I'm scheduling these. I need an upload schedule. But anyway, my last video, talking about the Bills-Colts game. That one was pretty easy. I think we'll stick with the easy ones here <laughs> before we get into a tough one later. But my the next video see will be a, a tougher one to predict. Predict, but um, yeah, we got the Buccaneers and the uh, Washingtons, Washington football teams. Yeah, this is it'll it, it it'll be interesting. Um, for those of you who watched the last video, it's the same structure. For those of you who didn't. The structure will be why I think the Bucks will win, why I think Washington will win, why I think the Buccaneers will lose, and why I think Washington will lose. And then, at the end, my prediction. So, yeah. Let's just, let's, let's start it off. Why will the Buccaneers win? Well, to sum it up real quick, I got five answers for you. Well, maybe six. I got five answers for you. Tom Brady, Chris Godwin, Antonio Brown, Scotty Miller, Rob Gronkowski. And then game time decision, Mike Evans. If I think he's supposed to play. Um, let me check real quick. Yeah, he's just, he's limited or questionable. So, uh, five and a half reasons. Um... Yeah, five five and a half reasons why I think the uh, well that's quick five and a half. Um, I got more. Well, let's touch on this. Brady has looked superb since joining the Bucks. It, it looked like the right decision. He finished third in passing with four thousand six hundred thirty three yards. Um, don't know where he placed overall in touchdowns. Um, third in touchdowns with forty, uh, tied with uh, Russell interceptions. Wasn't great, <clears throat> but um, finished towards the uh, towards the bottom part, tied with uh, Tyler Murray and Nick Mullins. Some uh, great company, uh, Murray and Brady are in. But um, overall, was not bad. Brady had a very good year. Um, what was his completion percentage? Um. Sorry, uh, sixty-six percent completion percentage. That's it's very it's close to Mahomes. Um, just ahead of Ryan's. Anyway, Brady's look good. Yeah, there's very there there are instances where he's looked old, but that's in part to the fact that he he's old. He's older than some of the coaches. Okay, it's. He just, he, he's old, okay? He may think he's not as old. He, he's old. But um, enough about Brady's age. Um, yeah, overall, they just look so good. I mean, they were on pace to have two 1,000-yard receivers um, if Godwin hadn't missed four games. But um, Antonio Brown's done great as of late. Sorry if you hear a lot of background noise. Yeah, my entire family's upstairs, so great, great recording. But um, yeah, the Bucks have looked. Their offense is just look. Um, the next reason would be um, you know, the the, the thing that protects Brady. They've had a great O line. Like the the time that Brady has to throw the ball is is it's amazing. Like they're giving him so much time. The, the, their offense, their offense looks scary. And to add on to that, Ronald Jones is a beast. I, I what was it, a ninety-eight, ninety-nine yard touchdown run? Like he would, he also would have been a thousand yard rusher if they just won a pass first team. Like, well, even if they were a pass first team, if they gave him just a couple more carries. Thousand yard rusher. 
this offense is just insane. And you can you could add on to it Leonard Fournette. OJ Howard, you could. But they're they're irrelevant right now. I don't even know why I brought them up. But um the next thing we got we gotta talk about the defense too. They will force Washington to pass. This Tampa Bay's run defense was towards the top. Um where was it? Let's see here. Yeah, they they had the fourth I can count fourth best rushing defense, only behind the Lions, Texans, and Steelers. Like opposite of that order, like Lions were third. I actually I don't understand how two of them are up there, but still, and they were tied with the Jaguars. Well, granted, they faced more rushing attempts than three of the teams I mentioned. Anyway, their rushing defense is good. Is very good. Um, like the longest one they've given up, the longest rush they've given up is oh, 98. Well, ignore that point. The average yard, yards per carry is 4.1, one of the best. They've only allowed 16 rushing touchdowns, which isn't great. But it's not bad. <laughs> it's not horrible. Um, they are benefited by not having to face Christian McCaffrey twice a year and only having to face Alvin Kamara. But um, they they have given up nine twenty plus yard plays, but um, only only two only two forty plus yard plays. Yet y you can get a big play on this team. But um, yeah, overall their rushing defense, as highlighted by their total rushing amount of rushing yards allowed, is superb. Great rushing defense. But if we want to talk defense. Defense has gotten Washington to the playoffs. There's no doubt about that. If we want to stick on rushing yards, they're eighth in rushing yards allowed with 1,611. Um, they allow four yards per carry, better than the Bucks. Uh, they have allowed 18 rushing touchdowns. Granted, that is because they play against teams that can't throw a football. But um, st seven plus uh, twenty yard gains, um, but only one forty plus yarder, which was only a forty yarder. So you're not going to get big plays against them. And they have forced three um, rushing fumbles, which is tied with the Bucks. If we want to go to uh, passing stats, they have given up. Where's the yards? Uh, three thousand seven hundred ninety six yards. Which is what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ninth in the league. They've only allowed sixteen passing touchdowns, and they have gotten sixteen interceptions. That's amazing. Like they're granted they are playing teams with Daniel Jones at quarterback, and Andy Dalton, and the Eagles. Well, that's they played in Wentz. Yeah, it's it's explainable, but still, insane. The the fact that they can still get sixteen interceptions, it's the reason they're here. But um, their defense looks is, is the reason they're, and two of the reasons for that, Montez Sweat and Chase Young. Montez Sweat I think does get overlooked a little bit, um, because Chase Young as a rookie looks amazing, but Montez Sweat led the team. In um, tackles for loss and sacks, with uh, he had 45 total tackles, 12 of those were for loss, and nine sacks with an interception and two forced fumbles. Chase Young, I mean, I I do want Montez Sweat to get started, but Chase Chase Young, um, had 44 tackles, 10 for loss, seven and a half sacks, and four forced fumbles. Like those two. Just amazing. Those those two are the reason why the Bucks are in the play or the the football teams in the playoffs. That's such a weird. Yes, the football team. Um, the next reason is Terry Terry McLaurin is a beast. I I I, I don't know how else to say it. In my opinion. 
he is the best receiver from his draft class. I I get there is a certain monster, you could say, <laughs> um, from that draft class. But, um, yeah, in my opinion, he is the... He is the best receiver from that draft class. But, um, yeah, it, it, it also doesn't help um, when your quarterback's only, when your best quarterback only plays, only starts six games, plays in eight of them. But, um, but yeah, they're, they're McLaurin's a beast. Like, you, you just can't. He's McLaurin's very good, and that that he would be there, he would have to put the offense on his back. But um, yeah. And the final reason for me is um, is uh, Antonio Gibson. He is he has shown flashes of greatness and a lot of potential. But there have been times where he has has struggled. But um, specifically against good run defenses like the Bucks are. But still, 795 yards, not bad. 11 touchdowns, not bad. He's had a very good year, showed a lot of potential. And his best games were against the Dallas, not even a football team. But still, if he just, if the playoffs flick something that he just <laughs> turns into Marshawn Lynch, it's, it, it'll look very good for the, for the football team. Uh, but why the Buccaneers will lose is my thought process on that. It's not, not thorough. It will, not a lot to think about for this. But, um,. The, the the two main ones, po- uh, well, injuries and their passing defense. That's the two main reasons. Because starting off, possibly no Mike Evans. That would hurt. But then um, their key defensive pieces, Steve McClendon, Vita Vey, Sha- Sha- Shaquille Barrett, Devin White, they've been out for a little bit. They've won without some of them. So that's, they're not, they're great players. Like, three of them are great players. McClendon's good. But, um, yeah, the injuries could possibly hurt this team. I doubt it. But um, that could be a reason why the Bucks would lose. Uh, the second one is the passing defense. They have allowed 246.6 um, yards per game. I my mind just returned to its normal state. Just, but um, yeah. Sorry, they've allowed two hundred forty-six point six yards per game, which is not among the worst. But it, it's 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 it, it, it is among the worst. I'm so, I I tried. They're the fourth worst team against the pass. They've allowed 4,776 yards total, 42 touchdowns. They've only gotten 12 interceptions. Well, I shouldn't say only. 12 interceptions, quite a bit, especially compared to the competition. Well, the Bills are at 11. Falcons at 11. Oh, the Bills had a much worse passing defense than I thought. Now that I'm actually looking at the... And in the last game, I just, in the last video, I just said about how good they were. Well, anyway, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> I'm sticking with that. But, um, yeah, the Bucks' passing defense, specifically their yards after carry, is not good. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have an actual stat. But um, I think, if I remember right, it's 23rd in the league. The Bucks were 23rd in um, yards after catch. That's not good, especially with a, Buc- with a football team that is pass first. Um, it's not the most effective pass first. But um, they do like to work through Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin, J.D. McKissick out of the backfield. But yeah, 
Uh, the only reason I, I could possibly fathom, like that I could possibly mention, was uh, Bruce Arians isn't the most experienced coach. Like He's the less experienced of the two coaches in this matchup, where he has played three playoff games and lost two of them. But um, I don't think that'll come into into play uh, due to the fact that they have a, a six-time champion, who, another one I could put in, who is, hasn't performed great in primetime. Brady hasn't performed great in primetime. But the playoffs is just a different type of Brady, except for last year. Last year was not good. It's not. It's not good. But um, yeah, those would be the reasons why the Bucks could possibly lose, and uh, why Washington will lose. Alex Smith ain't the quarterback you want. Yes, the man is amazing. I love the man. Okay, one of the toughest, <laughs> toughest dudes, and you, you will ever know. You will ever even hear of. Like, his story is amazing. I would love for him to go and win this game. That would just be amazing. But when you come to action, when it comes to actually playing the game, he is he's not the best in the playoffs. In fact, I think he's there's a chance he's the 14th best quarterback. He's down there with Goff. But um yeah, he ain't the quarterback you want. Um, and the next thing, they will become one-dimensional. As I mentioned, the Bucks' run defense is amazing. Granted, it does... The Bucks are a pass-first team, and the football team is the pass-first team. But um, the Bucks And the Buccaneers have a not-great pass defense, so it could work. But you're going to be able to call pass... Pass protect... Like, you're going to be able to call zone pass defense plays. Just about every single one of them, because the run defense is so good... And the Bucks will be ahead. The, the, the Washington's going to have to be forced to throw. But um, the next thing is they might not get the pass rush that got, they needed. They needed it for this. The Bucks O-line is great. I mean, it's Chase Young and Sweat have looked great. But against the best O-line that they'll probably face, I mean, you can make an argument. Actually, I don't know their schedule. I was going to say the Cowboys. But, um... Anyway, I don't. Sorry, I don't remember insignificant schedules. Um, this is this will probably be the best O line they've placed, best passing O line at least. But um, they might not be able to get the rush that they need in order to force Tom out of the pocket, make him a little bit uncomfortable in there. And the next reason is there's just too many weapons. There's five and a half weapons that are starting. Well, one of them might not. There's five weapons that are starting, whether Mike Evans is playing or not. There's two very solid weapons on the bench in Fournette and Howard. Solid. Not good. But, yeah, there's there's too many. There's too many. But my prediction. I have the Bucks winning. I, I do like Washington. I, I like Washington. I think they're the best NFC East team, without a doubt. They're the best NFC East team. Think would have won the game whether Hertz was playing or not, but I have the Bucks winning thirty-five to twenty-one. I think the pass defense will will have three touchdowns, um, maybe not all passing touchdowns, but um, will allow pass plays to set up touchdowns. But uh, yeah, the, the they the Washington won't get the pass rush they need. Okay, there are too many weapons. Like these are legitimate reasons why Washington will lose. Uh, yeah, Bucks thirty five, Washington uh, for twenty one. But um, if, thank you all for watching. Um, if you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe. Uh, I would add, love you forever. But um, yeah, I'll see you for the next video. Adios.